Hello everyone, Movies here, and welcome to the Normal Mode Assembly of Iron Boss Guide. This guide will cover only the Normal Mode and the basic abilities of the bosses. If you're looking for the Hard Mode Boss Guide, use the link in the description or click the annotation on the screen. Let's get into it! Assembly of Iron is a council fight with three different mobs that each have two abilities and health pools. You'll need to kill all three individually to win this fight, and as you kill them off, the remainder will gain new abilities and return to full health. They can be done in any order you'd like, however some orders are more difficult than others. The first boss mob is the Mighty Steelbreaker. He casts High Voltage, which is an aura that inflicts 3000 nature damage to the whole raid every 3 seconds, and Fusion Punch. This hits his primary target for up to 35,000 damage and leaves a debuff on the target which deals 20,000 damage every second for 4 seconds and can be dispelled. Next is Rune Master Mulgheim. He will cast Shield of Runes which absorbs 50,000 damage and can be spell stolen, dispelled, purged, trank shot. If it's broken, it will leave a buff on Mulgheim increasing his damage by 50% for 15 seconds. He'll also cast Rune of Power. This places a small blue rune on the ground underneath one of the available boss mobs, increasing the damage of anyone standing in it by 50%. Finally, Stormcaller Brindir. He will cast Chain Lightning, which is an interruptible nature spell that deals around 6,000 nature damage to, a tar to its target and arcs to any nearby players. Like Zeliac, this can chain forever and will kill if it chains. He also casts Overload, which is a 6 second uninterruptible cast that deals 25,000 nature damage to all targets within 20 yards of the boss and knocks them down. Once one dies, the remaining bosses will gain a new ability. Steelbreaker gains Static Disruption which hits for 7,000 nature damage and leaves a debuff that can spread to anyone within 6 yards that increases nature damage taken by 75% for 20 seconds. Rune Master Mulgheim gains Rune of Death, which is a large green rune placed on the ground that deals 3,500 shadow damage every 1 second for those in it. It is 21 yards wide. Stormcrawler Brandir gains Lightning Whirl, this is another interruptible cast that is a version of the Lightning Whirlwind that will deal nature damage to all raid members if allowed to cast. Once two boss mobs are dead, the final boss will go Super Saiyan and gain a final ability or two. Steelbreaker gains two new abilities. Overwhelming Power, which hits the tank and increases their damage by 200% for 30 seconds. After the 30 seconds, the tank will melt down and die, dealing 30k damage to anyone within 15 yards. He also gains Electrical Charge, which increases Steelbreaker's damage by 25% and heals him for 40% of his HP whenever a player or a pet dies. This can be affected by healing reduction. Mulgheim gains Rune of Summoning. He will place a rune on the ground that spawns a lightning elemental from it periodically. The Lightning Elemental will run towards the highest threat player and explode, dealing 15,000 nature damage to anyone within 30 yards. Finally, Stormcrawler Brundir gains Lightning Tendrils. He will take to the sky with his body attached to the ground via Lightning. He will pick a target and move towards them. If any players are in the Lightning, they will take 5,000 nature damage every one second until they move out. For this video, we'll discuss the Normal Mode. I recommend bringing a normal, balanced raid comp for this fight. Two tanks, five healers, and a mix of ranged and melee DPS. The order you'll kill the bosses in is as follows. For Phase 1, we'll kill Steelbreaker first. Phase 2, Rune Master Mulgheim. And finally, Phase 3, Stormcaller Brundir. To start, have one tank assigned to Steelbreaker and only Steelbreaker. Your other tank will pick up Stormcaller Brundir and Rune Master Mulgheim. Set up an interrupt rotation for Brundir and keep them going throughout the first phase. All these interrupters and the tank will need to run out for overload. All other DPS should be on Steelbreaker, bringing him down first. If you have an Affliction Warlock, you can put their Fell Hunter on Mulgheim and use Devour Magic, which will remove the shield immediately. 
You can keep the bosses moderately stacked, but kill Steelbreaker at least 20 to 30 yards away to avoid overload, but look out for the Rune of Power. Steelbreaker's hitbox is large and kind of weird, so go further out of the Rune if you need to. Every fusion punch must be dispelled off the tank immediately. If you fail to do this, it could lead to a wipe as the damage from fusion punch is very high. Once your first rune of power spawns, ensure you move all the bosses off it, but reposition to have your raid able to use the rune. In short, for phase 1, dispel fusion punch, interrupt Brindir, interrupters run out for overload, keep Fellhunter on Mulgheim, and stand in the runes when they're available. Now for phase 2. This begins when Steelbreaker dies. Your Steelbreaker tank will pick up one of the remaining mobs and pull it 20 to 30 yards away. Mulgheim will gain his Rune of Death and Brundir will gain Lightning Whirl. Keep your interrupt rotation going, but now it must be more frequent as Lightning Whirl will also need to be interrupted. Feel free to add another DPS to the rotation or a ranged shaman catching specific casts. He will still cast Overload, so ensure your interrupters don't get complacent. Mulgheim's giant rune of death is not on a timer currently, so it may be difficult to tell when the first one is going to come out. Keep using the rune of power as needed. The way we handled this was about 25 seconds into phase 2, we had the entire raid group spread out away from the recent rune of power, so when the rune of death spawned, it did two things. It did not spawn on multiple people, causing larger healer strain and deaths, and it did not spawn on the rune of power, so you can still use it. This may require a bit of practice, but once you get the timing, it will save you in the long run. All DPS should be on Mulgheim unless they're interrupting Brundir. Phase 3 begins when Mulgheim dies and Brundir gains his final Super Saiyan ability. Lightning Tendrils. When this phase starts, try to keep the rune up as much as possible and position Brundir so as many DPS can use it as possible. You can choose to Lust here, or if you want to Lust on Steelbreaker, depending on your guild and how your damage profile is. Continue interrupting Chain Lightning and Lightning Whirl, running out for Overload, but now he casts Lightning Tendrils, and the entire raid should spread out when the entire room and kite him around. He moves pretty fast and can't be slowed, so be careful and don't be in the Lightning for long. After a short time, he'll come back to the ground and do the same thing as the phase before. Kill Brundir, and you've killed the first boss in the antechamber of Ulduar. If you're interested in the hard mode strategy for this boss, please click on the link in the description. See you next time!